everybody, it's Mandy from Travel Forge. So I have a lot to do this week. It is Tuesday. We were uh, in Lancaster, which is where we used to live, all day Sunday, which was a little out of the ordinary. We had a wedding, I had a midwife appointment, baby's great, everything is good. Um, so yesterday we kind of just got caught up. We, till we got caught up, it was like three o'clock. So we actually just did a Sam's trip. I got restocked on supplies for the micro bakery and just a couple other things that we needed because for the most part, I get things shipped in from Sam's, um, like the dry goods, but there is stuff they won't ship, obviously like cheese and pepperoni and the things that I need for, uh, baking. So we did that yesterday, kind of got a little bit caught up on just like household things and laundry and whatever. Today, I have a little over three bushels of peaches to work on. I also have about three and a half to four bushels of cucumbers. So, um, Zad and Bud and Jameson are all at Ag Progress Days, um, which is like a big farming event kind of thing out in the middle of nowhere. They are very excited. They're going with one of our uh, other friends and their family. So Zuzu and I, Zuzu, can you say hi? She doesn't want to say hi. She wants to watch Mulan and not be a part of mommy's video. Um, so Zuzu and I are on peaches duty. Zuzu filled my pots for me. So I actually put up a video last year about canning peaches and I peeled them by hand, um, which is what I've always done in the past. Um, I was very skeptical about the boiling water, dropping them in, pulling them out, ice water, and that the skins would peel off method. Um, I, obviously, I've watched people do this a million times. Um, my mom did it, I think, last year and this year, and she said that it went really well. Now, obviously, they have to be like the right ripeness in order for that to work. Um, some of the ones I have may not be quite ripe. We got them at the orchard last, like, Thursday. Um, we got a great deal on them. They grow them right there. It is, it's so nice to have that resource in our oh, backyard. In our backyard. I mean, like they're like 30 minutes each way, but nonetheless, you know, they're great people to buy from or whatever. Um, nice Amish family. So we got those. I picked the cucumbers up in Lancaster from my, um, produce dealer down there. Um, she's the best. I just send her a text with what I need and she sits it out with my name on it and I leave her a check and it is always good quality stuff that I know she grew right there. She's super nice. Um, especially in this season of life, as I've mentioned before, like I don't have time to go like do all these miscellaneous hours and hours of like shopping and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just nice that I have like my key farmers that I can go to for stuff. And I know that they grew it and you know, that I just, I just love supporting those small farmers. So the plan is I have two stock pots on the stove with boiling water in them. I'm going to drop the peaches in. I'm going to find the bus tub that the kids wandered off with somewhere, uh, put cold like ice water in it, drop the peaches in. And then I'm hoping the skins will just peel right off or that's the goal. Um, ones that are not quite ripe. And so like, if you're new to peaches, basically, if you like squeeze it, if it makes an indent, it's probably ripe. If it's kind of hard, it probably needs to sit for a little bit longer. So, um, our friend down the road has a walk-in cooler. He let us leave them in the walk-in cooler for the last few days because I had done like a huge baking day, um, to go down to Lancaster. So I was baking for like 16 hours straight. It was crazy and it was awesome and it went really, really well. And everybody loved their stuff. Um, um, anyway, so he let us put them in the cooler for a few days. We pulled them out last night just for the last ones could start to ripen. So if I run across any that are not quite ripe, I'll just stash them in our fridge and we can just eat them fresh because who doesn't love a fresh peach? Um, we can make a cobbler with it or something like that. So I have those pots going. I already washed up my jars. I did that part last night. So I'm thinking I'm going to get, I'm shooting for 50 quarts. Um, I'd love to have like a quart ish a week. Obviously, we would love to have more than that, but like peaches are one of those things that they're not cheap. Um, they are kind of not super labor intensive, but labor intensive enough that doing a couple hundred jars by myself, 33 weeks pregnant while watching a toddler is probably not very practical. So this is fine. If we can get a jar a week on the shelf, that's just going to have to be good enough for this year, which is fine. So my jars are over here already washed. My pots are going, my peaches are staged and I will take you through this process. All right. So, um, this method is the best. Now, if I have some that I run across that pulled the softest ones out for me last night. Um, if I have ones that aren't quite ripe, like I said, I'm going to pop those in the fridge because from mom's experience and what she told me, if they weren't quite as ripe, obviously the skins are not going to come off as easily. 
depending on how many I have, I might just peel some by hand, but this is the best. So basically I'm dropping my, so I have like my staged peaches over here. These are the softer ones. Dropping them in the boiling water for, oh, I don't know. I didn't really keep track. Three minutes, something like that will pretty much do it. Um, I did turn these off because I was peeling and Zuzu needed me, but get those boiling. I have these like half full so that I can put a fair amount of peaches in. And then I have my other bus tub here. What's the matter? My other bus tub here with my peaches to peel. So I had some ice in here with some water. Honestly, when I'm done with this, I'll probably, I might dump this peach juice into like a five gallon bucket um and take it out and put it like in the hog trough or something because they will love it um i don't really want i'm not gonna like use this for us or whatever but might as well feed it to the pigs they'll I'll put it in their trough they'll love it um and these are peeling like oh my gosh i'm not i literally haven't even busted a knife out yet so if you've been following me for a while you know that i am anal about pretty much absolutely nothing um so i'm not like doing halves or nice slices or any of that silliness. Um, I just literally am breaking them apart by hand and dropping them in. So some of them are halves, some of them are slices. It doesn't change the canning time. I am so unworried about it. I will not be doing sugar or fruit fresh or anything like that. These will be fine. I have never really, I've never used fruit fresh. I did use sugar like prior to Zed's heart attack. I probably made like a sugar syrup to put in here. I don't really find it's necessary. These are super sweet. I don't really need it. Um, and I might have my big canner set up outside. So if you've not seen that before, I'll show it to you, but I might be able to do this in one run in my big canner, which would be just fantastic. As far as browning goes, I get that question a lot. Um, if you're super worried about that, you could use something like fruit fresh, or I'm sure there's some other kinds of things you can use. I've only ever had the ones at the very top get like a little bit brown and it's fine. Like they taste the same. I'm not worried about it. If you're a very picky particular person, again, I'm probably not the right person to follow because I am not picky or particular about anything. Um, the only thing I care about is that they're canned safely and that we have a good amount on the shelf for the year. What so, I'm doing over here is this is my bus tub that has the ones that I already, the flies are so ridiculous, that I already uh, had in the boiling water, put in the cold water, and you can see like, this is just peeling right off. Like, it's, it's just amazing. And so I'm not using a knife. Like I'm literally just going like this, pulling this out, dropping it in my jar, pulling the pit out, dropping the other piece in and calling it a day. I got my chicken bowl here. I am gonna save some peach pits. Um, I don't know, see if we can start some more peach trees. We have two. We did get some peaches this year. Um, not enough to can, of course. So like I said, we got these from a local orchard, but I'd love to keep working on our orchard. So we might try to plant some of these. I need to do some research on that. If you know about that, let me know because I'm totally here for tips on that. All right, so these, like, well, obviously, I'm gonna cut that spot out. If you have spots like that, I would definitely cut them out. These are, I think they're ripe enough. These are a different kind. I think I got three kinds. Harkin is the one. Oh my gosh, I've never had them, but they are delicious. So if you can find those, they're delicious. Can't remember what the other two are, but that's fine, it doesn't matter. The Amish lady said they were good canning peaches and I trust her. Um, so yeah, if you have spots like this, cut these out. You don't want those in your jars. Also, I'm sure that this will be slightly controversial, but I, um, oh, P.S. Put a little slit in the bottom. If it's not already soft with a broken skin, put a little slit in the bottom. It'll help with peeling them. I'm sure this will be somewhat controversial, but I am putting all the pits, all the bad spots, whatever, into the bowl, and they're going to go to the chickens. I have been doing this for several years. If the chickens don't want to eat it, they're not going to eat it. Uh, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll just have like peach trees just like pop up in the chicken run. That would be fantastic. I already have one peach tree in the chicken run. I didn't put it there. We put the chicken run around the tree. Um, so I, if you are hypersensitive about feeding your animals, like a little bit of a moldy peach skin, put it in a separate container, throw it in the compost. Um, if you're not that worried about it and you know that chickens are smart enough to not eat it if they're not supposed to, Throw it in the same bowl. Don't fret about it. It's probably gonna be fine. This right here, like this caramely, like, so we each had one when we got these at the orchard. We um, each had one in the car. Like it was warm because it was a hot day. It was like, I don't know, it was 98 or something insane. Um, and they were warm and like, oh, 
they were heaven. So this right here, man, that's, that's the stuff right there. The nice thing about this method too is like, so I'm doing what I say, like a little over three bushels. Um, if you like get pulled aside because of a toddler, you need to pee, you need to get a snack, whatever, just turn your burners off. If they sit in there for a few extra minutes, it is really not gonna matter. If they sit in your cold water for a few extra minutes, good, not gonna burn yourself. So this is a very forgiving canning project, which is why I always recommend it as like a beginner one. Um, you know, I never recommend like jumping into canning and the first thing you do is like ground beef or something, you know. There's like a lot of steps. Pressure canners are definitely a learning curve. They're easy, like once you get the hang of it, you know what you're doing, but they're a little bit of a learning curve. You know, applesauce is great, but it's a lot easier if you have a food mill. Um, so, you know, there's special equipment involved here. Like, seriously, I have two big pots, this knife that is not even a paring knife, and we're gonna get the job done. So, you know, if you have five gallon buckets or you know whatever that you can kind of stage your peaches in put your chicken scraps in that kind of thing um you know that's that's really all you need for this project also if you are a mom i mean typically i have bud and zad's help if i need it they really wanted to go to this today and i was like seriously i can handle peaches i definitely want them here for cucumbers and i'll do a video about how to do pickles so I had a very traumatic experience with the mandolin and I'm sure my parents are watching this and my mom is going to smile. Um, I was probably like, I don't even think I had bud, maybe. I was maybe 19 or 20. Um, nah, I must have been like 20, maybe I was 21 because I'm pretty sure I was married. And this like scar, you probably can't see it on camera, but the scar on the tip of my finger, took off the tip of my finger with the mandolin. If you're not familiar with the mandolin, it's like the thing where you go like this and you get like thin slices of cucumbers or onions or whatever it is that you're cutting. I like literally have refused to use a mandolin since then. So I'm about 16 years strong on not using a mandolin, 15, however old I am. Um, but it is very helpful for making pickles. You can definitely do like the fat pickles. Um, you know, the slices are like that if you have like the thinner cucumbers, but it doesn't really work that well if you have like, you know, six or eight inch cucumbers. Um, so I'll bring you that video here next. But peaches are one of those things that like, okay, now I guess this depends on your opinion of screen time. You know, Zuzu is watching Parent Trap, the good one with Lindsay Lohan, of course. Um, and she's probably gonna watch a couple movies today, and that's fine. She is super happy in her blankie <laughs> with her snack and her drink and watching movie, and she doesn't have to share the TV with her brothers. Um, you know, so if, you, if you're okay with those kinds of things, then that's fine. It's not like we're gonna be inside all day. Once we're, you know, done with this, we're gonna go out and do the animals. I'm sure we'll play outside for a little while or whatever. Like I said, this is very forgiving. If your toddlers start to get crazy because they don't want to be inside, you know, if you have a fence in your yard or something, send them outside. If you want to go outside with them and, and play with them, you could seriously just turn the burners off. You know, I would probably maybe make sure your things are empty if you need to, but if they had to sit, they're going to be fine. They might deteriorate slightly, but the taste is not going to change. It is really going to be fine. This is a great project to do if you're by yourself with toddlers. All right, so when I pull these out, I do have this. If you don't have something like this, you could use tongs, you could use a slotted spoon. Um, don't put your hand directly in the pot. That would not be a good idea. Um, something like this is great. If you have a spider of sorts, we do have we do have this kind of spider. It would work. Um, this one's just annoying to clean. I, I know this thing has its purposes, but cleaning this little web ugh, stuff is super annoying. So if you have this, this would work. Okay, so something I like about having wide mouth and regular is when, because, you know, like I said, I'm not picky about the shape, the size, the appearance, whatever. Um, I'm mostly concerned about canning safety and that I have a full shelf of yummy things. Um, if you get a nice half, you can drop it in your wide mouth. If you get a piece, you can drop it in your regular. All right, so here's another like Mandy word of wisdom. And again, if you're super picky, this wisdom's not for you. So this peach was obviously super soft. Even if I cut it with a knife, it wasn't going to come out pretty. Literally doesn't matter. I'm gonna drop it in this jar and it's gonna be delicious. And no one's even gonna know because probably the littles are going to eat a good bit of these. Um, and they're not gonna care. They're gonna demolish it with their fork or like, you know, open their mouth and show it to each other or put it on the table or who knows what else. So I, I personally obviously do not get hyped up about these things. You can totally like be super particular about this, make them really pretty. If you're giving them as like Christmas gifts and stuff, 
like have at it. Take the time to get it done. But I, I need, really want to get these done before Zad and Bud and Jamie get home. Another thing I just thought about, if you're new to peaches, new to canning or whatever, try to find freestone, cling, I think they're called clingstone, cling, clingstone, I don't know. Look for freestone because that's how I can just peel them off like super easily. Um, most of the time I would say if you go to like an orchard and they know people are coming in for bulk, they're probably going to be freestone. But always ask, especially if you're not sure or Google the variety or whatever, because if they're cling, I made this mistake like many years ago when I started canning. Oh, it was such a nightmare. Like they were good, but it was so much work. So when they're freestone, like the peach literally just comes. It's literally what it says. It just comes free. Like it just comes right off and it's so much easier. All right, so I have a bushel done. Because I have the pits in here, I was gonna freeze dry the peels, but I don't think I have it in me. I have a an okay amount of peach powder in the pantry, so we're just gonna roll with that. Um, so I will feed that stuff to the pigs, because it's got the, or sorry, to the chickens, because it has the pits in it, and they'll just pick everything off the pits and then leave them. The pigs, unfortunately, do not have the same discernment, and they will probably choke on them. So maybe they wouldn't, I don't know, but I don't need like little peach trees growing inside of my pigs. So this peach juice that came off of that, I am going to put into this bucket and then I'm gonna to need to go outside and round up some more buckets. And then I'm just gonna take that when we go feed the animals later, I'm just gonna dump that in their trough and they will gobble it up. So we got 54 quarts and four pints out of the deal. I had to round up some pints because I'm completely out of quarts. Like they're all literally full of food. So these look just wonderful. Peaches are so satisfying. Um, so what we're going to do is, well, first I'm going to show you what we're feeding the animals here later when I do animals today. So I have this big tub of scraps. I have three buckets of juice. So this one will go to the chickens because it's, um, got the pits and that kind of stuff in it. These I will fill the pig trough with, so they will love that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get the kitchen a little bit cleaned up here quick. Um, and then we're going to wipe the rims with some white vinegar, get them all lidded and ringed. I might be able to fit them in the big canner and get this done in one round. Maybe not. It might have to be two. Um, but we are so close. So if you're new to canning, <clears throat> if you got jars from grandma, jars from a yard sale, jars from a thrift store or whatever, something to keep in mind, especially with these older style ones, they always, eventually, inevitably, you will get one with a chip in the rim. So I just dumped those into two pints since I said I'm out of quartz, which is no big deal. But when you're wiping your rims, <clears throat> be mindful of feeling for chips. Um, it's just, it's not going to seal and you're just going to be disappointed and wind up putting it in the fridge or eating it anyway. So as soon as I finish wiping these with just some white vinegar, um, then I'm going to top any of them off with water that need topped off. Some of them just have naturally made their own juice and are very close to the top. We're going to do about a half inch headspace on this. So we'll just top it off with some plain water. This is where you can modify things if you want to. If you want to make a sugar syrup, you totally can do that. Um, I don't feel like it's necessary. They're already plenty sweet. And especially when we put them in <clears throat> things like baked oatmeal, fruit crisp, um, whatever. I, I mean, you're almost always adding another sweetener anyway, so it's just really not necessary in our opinion. But again, how pretty are these? All right, so if you've never seen my outdoor canning setup, basically I have this huge crab boil pot, crayfish boil, whatever you want to call it, um, that I got on Amazon. And we hook it to the propane tank. Zad, uh, they had this nice like stand made when Zad's dad and his brother died many, many years ago. Um, so we have this cool little setup here and we use the interior pot as the bottom. So like the bottom rack. And then this came out of one of our smokers. So um, we use that as the center rack. So I'm gonna see how many I can squeeze in here. If I only have a few left, I'll probably just set a canner up on uh, the stove in the kitchen. That way I can get this wrapped. The great thing about this setup is it kind of acts as like a summer kitchen. Um, you know, when it, it's not like super hot today actually. It's only like low 80s, which is significantly better than it has been. Um, I mean, it was like 20 degrees hotter than this, like a week and a half ago. And the humidity was just insane. It's not too bad right now. So I'm gonna get these in here and then I'm going to get water from the hose, fill that up 
and get the propane on and we'll get going. All right, so pints are 20, quarts are 25. Probably gonna wind up mixing this batch, so I'm just gonna run it for 25 minutes. I must have been like thinking this held more than it does. Whatever, it's got almost 30 in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run two rounds in this canner. If there's no point in heating up the house and dragging out like two canners and multiple runs and that and whatever. So we'll just do two runs in this, which is no big deal. I just need to babysit that. So we'll go over here and get the hose and get the propane going. There's no pints in here, but I still need to do it 25 minutes for quarts. Okay, so I am on the porch swing with a cup of coffee that I've reheated like four times. And baby is <laughs> soaking wet from doing dishes, but dishes are done, kitchen is cleaned up, cabinets are wiped. I did not sweep and mop yet. I need to do that and I still need to do the animals, but Zuzu is napping, so it seemed like a really good time to sit on the front porch and edit a video, work on social, drink some coffee, enjoy this day that is not completely disgusting. So I hope that this was helpful. I'm just gonna continue to babysit the canner here, pull these out, put the next round in, and peaches will be done. So Zad and Bud and Jamie should be home here in a little bit. So if you have questions about how to can peaches, let me know. See you guys next time.